Hey, stir it up. That's the name of the message series that we started last week, Stir It Up. And I believe that's the word of the Lord for us because God wants to stir up our thirst, stir up our hunger, stir up our desire and our passion for him. You know, the definition of the word stir could, could range from a slight motion to a lot of movement and activity and excitement, a stirring. And even when you're in the kitchen, when you're stirring and you're cooking, you're breaking up the different components and you're mixing them all together. And I believe God wants to do a stirring to break up the uh, complacency, break up the fear, break, break the hardness up. And he wants to stir up, take, break that off, and stir up a hunger and a desire for him. Now, I'm not just talking about a natural hunger like we have in our, our bodies for food. I'm talking about a hunger of your spirit and of your soul. Because we all have a longing in our heart to know God, and only Jesus Christ can truly satisfy. And today I'm going to be talking about hunger and signs of spiritual hunger. And I bet after you listen to this message, you're going to realize that you're more hungry for God than actually you thought you were. But before I begin my message, I would just like to invite you to, to lean in and just to worship with us as we enter his gates with praise and thanksgiving. So praise the Lord. So just um, turn, up the, uh, turn up the volume. Uh, uh, just worship the Lord with us. And I'll be right back with you after the worship. God bless you. Your love is devoted Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizon With mercies for today yourself to me that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips oh. mm. Oh. Oh.
Stir up your hunger for God. Stir up your thirst for God. Stir up your desire for God. See, God responds to your hunger. Jesus Christ satisfies your souls. Are you hungry for God? Hungry for truth? Hungry for the world's greatest book? Hungry for real answers to real problems? Hungry for moral change? Hungry for political change? Hungry for self-change? Are you dry, weary, broken, frustrated? Call to Jesus. He will answer. Amen, amen. Listen, I invite you to pray with me before I begin the message. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence and your Holy Spirit. And God, I ask that you just anoint my lips. And Father, anoint our ears to hear what you're saying to us, O God. Holy Spirit, stir up a hunger in us. Speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. I like Psalm 34, verses 8. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. There's an action word right there, taste. What do you do when you have food? You don't know what it tastes like until you actually taste it and try it. You can look at some great things on the menu, but until you actually taste it, you don't know how good it is. And what an invitation from our God. He says, taste and you're going to see that the Lord is good. God is a good God. Hallelujah. And um, hunger that we have in our heart is a sign, a spiritual signal that God gives us that he's going to have an encounter with us, that God wants to meet with you, God wants to have an encounter with you, he wants you to experience his presence. You know, just like our body has a craving and a desire for food, and we're not satisfied until we get something to eat, the same thing with our spirits. Until we really have an experience with God, until we really know him, there's always an unrest and something in us. And so hunger is a signal that God is wanting to meet with you. Um, there's a wonderful invitation we see in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. It's, it's a great picture. Here's, here's Jesus. He's saying, he says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and we will share a meal together as friends. I love that. What an invitation. Here's a picture of Jesus standing at the door. He's knocking. He says, Hey, I want to come in. He says, If you hear my voice and open the door, he says, I'm going to come in, and we're going to share a meal together. Now, another translation says we're going to dine together, or it says feast together. Now, what do you think of when there's a meal or a feast or when there's dining? You know, don't you just love it when somebody invites you to their house for a meal? Hey, it's good food, good friends. You're spending time together, and you're just, you're just being yourself. Isn't it great when you go out to dinner? And the same thing, the Lord, in this description in that word, I invite you, I knock on the door, and let's feast together. Let's have a meal. A feast is a big production. He pulls out all the stops, everything that's there, and that's what our God has. Everything that I have, I'm providing for you. That invitation, I'm standing at the door and knock. But here's that thing that we have to understand there. He says, look who's inviting you to dinner. Now, you might have had an experience where you've gone to dinner with someone that was, let's say, a little challenging to be loving at that moment, some challenging people, difficult time to spend time with them. But here's Jesus Christ, the Most High God, inviting you to spend time with him. He says he's, he wants to spend time with you and connect with you. And I believe that God is, is calling us back to a place of intimacy with him. And, and we need to make the Lord feel welcome. Because if, if he's not welcome, the Lord isn't going to come. But we need to open our hearts and say, God, you're welcome here. Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. God, I just welcome you into my life, into my family, into my marriage, into my finances. Welcome, God, come. And when we, when we welcome him in, hey, he's great. We make the way. And so when we stir up our heart, we stir up our, our, our desire and our, our hunger for him, he meets us. What an awesome thing to be in the presence of God. Glory to God. Now, when we look at some signs and some signals of hunger, I want to see if any of these connect with you. First of all, one of the signs of hunger is you are being dissatisfied with the current status. You're satisfied with the status quo, kind of where you're at spiritually. You, you're starting to think there's got to be more than this. God, I need you. I, there's, there's got to be more than this. Just same old, same ends. It just There's something more. When you, you're just dissatisfied with what you've always been doing, how things have always been. You feel like you're missing something. That's a hunger in your heart. It's like, I'm hungry. God, I'm hungry for you. There's got to be more of you. You're the most high God. There's got to be more of you than what I'm experiencing. That's the Holy Spirit starting to let you know. 
to stir you up. That's a hunger in your heart. Another signal of a hunger in your heart is that you you remember some of the past encounters you had with the Lord, and you kind of start to remember, man, that was great. Man, I remember the times I, I met with you, God. Uh, you know, we can meet with God at home. We can meet to God with God together corporately. And when you have those private times with the Lord, when you're reading God's word and he speaks to you, God, I'm just hungry for that. I'm, I met with you this morning, God, and I'm still hungry for you this afternoon. I'm hungry for you tonight and tomorrow as well. There's a past longing that you remember. It's like, man, I remember being in the house of God, worshiping him. There's a hunger in your heart stirring up that you want to be in his presence. That's, that's hunger is an invitation for you to come to dinner. God is preparing something for you. Another sign of a hunger for God, we talked about this last week. You're feeling dry. You're feeling weak. You're just, you're feeling depleted spiritually. That's something that um, a lot of people feel, and that's not necessarily a bad thing in and of itself because that's just a warning light on the dashboard of your life. Like, hey, I'm feeling dry. I'm feeling weak, spiritually depleted. That means we need to eat. Just like when your body, you feel weak, you feel tired, that's a sign you need to get something to eat. Same way with our spirit. You feel like something's missing, something's lacking. That's a sign. God, I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for you. Glory to God. There's, a, there's something that God wants to put inside of you and fill you up that only he, he can do. And when you're starting to feel those signs of hunger, you're getting on the edge of an outpouring of the spirit of God. God's going to be meeting with you. Another hunger sign is this. This is good to know is when you realize you've lost your passion. Now, this is more than just being weak or depleted. You've lost, like it says in Revelations, you lost your first love. That's a dangerous place to be in. You, there was a time you used to be like, yeah, I'm full on for God and this is great. And, and I used to go and I just, I'd just be faithful. And, and now it's like, yeah, you just, yeah, you can kinda, I can kind of take it or leave it. I'm just like, yeah. In, in Revelations, and actually this is where Jesus came in and gave this invitation in Revelations chapter 3. Uh, he's talking to, the Lord is talking to the church in Laodicea. Because the scripture says that uh, God says, hey, you're, you're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. I wish you were hot or cold. You're just lukewarm. I'm going to spit you out. That's a dangerous place to be in. Because the people were saying, hey, we're rich and increased with goods and we have no need. And sometimes we get in that place in our life like, hey, things are going good. You know, I got some money. I got a job. I'm doing okay. And I have no need for God. You know, a lot of times when there's a crisis or a tra tragedy, we run to God and we need to at those times. But when we get careless, when we start losing our desire, when, you know, when you recognize, uh, hey, I've lost my passion. When you recognize that, that's a sign that you're getting hungry. It's like, hey, wait a minute. I've lost my first love. And this is, what's, this is what was happening to the church in Laodicea at that time. They lost their first love for Jesus. They were beginning lukewarm. They says, hey, we're rich and increased with goods. We have no need for God. We're doing okay. Um, they thought they were doing okay. They were bad. They just thought they were doing okay. But then when they realized, like, hey, wait a minute here. I'm not where I used to be. Here's an invitation. You see, God, when he puts a hunger in you, he wants to pursue you. God is really pursuing you. He wants to bring a place of closeness and intimacy with him. And look at this, Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. He says this, Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Sometimes when we hear those words, Oh, I've been rebuked. I've been disciplined. Well, the Bible says no one likes discipline. It's never pleasant at the time, but it always produces a good harvest. Because discipline is training. Just like athletes, we have to be disciplined and trained. What to do with our bodies, what to do with our time, how, what we need to do. There's discipline in our lives, and God will correct us. He'll let us know the Word of God teaches us and corrects us. And God says, those who I love, I discipline and rebuke. Same way with us as parents. We who are in our own natural self, we with all our sins, we, we help those with those, we our kids. We correct them, teach them. Why? Because we love them. We don't want them to go the wrong direction. Same way with God. He says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Repent means change. And I love that invitation from God. Say, God... And, and when we open our hearts, say, God, I want to be hungry for you. You know, say, God, God, check me. Check me. It's a dangerous prayer. God, check me. Hey, if I'm getting on a line, God, I want to know because I don't want to be separated from you. I don't want to be distant. So God, search my heart, oh God. See if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in, in a relationship with you. God says, hey, I'm calling you back. He's pursuing you. And look at this. And so here is that invitation. If anyone hears my voice, and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Because Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. When you hear a knocking at the door, that knocking requires a response. 
when you hear a knock at the door, or let's say your phone pings, ping, what do you do? It, it's, there's a response. And a lot of times, the first response is, who is it? Who's at the door? Who's texting me? You want to know who it is. And then, that, and then once you find out who it is, there's a response that's required. You either open the door or you ignore it. Same thing with when we get a text message. Ding. Who's texting me? You look. You can either open it or you can ignore it. Same thing with God. When he's knocking on the door of your heart, there's giving signs. It's giving hunger things. He's starting to pull on your heartstrings. There's different things coming your way. You know it's God. You know. You know. You know when God's speaking to you. And that's him. He says, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. And if you open the door, I'm going to come in. I want to come in and we're going to have a meal together. And what do you do? He says, we're going to have a meal as friends. We're going to sit together as friends. Don't, is it just, there's just a hunger in your heart. Say, God, I want that hunger. I want to, I want to hang out with you. Some, I want you in my life. Not just, I don't want to just plug in Sunday morning and plug in and plug out to just a compartment, just this little area of my life. And when I'm done, I unplug and that's it. No, just hanging out, friends, just spending my life with you. See, God wants to stir it up. Jesus comes looking for us. There's an intimacy. He's, God is actually pursuing us. He's pursuing the church, which is the bride of Christ. He wants to put that hunger in you, and you're going to ask him to, to stir you up. And when you start getting hungry for God, here's something else that you're going to find out, that your appetite for other things, you're not that so much interested anymore. You know, maybe... Um, I, I remember um, there's a couple men in our church. These are fantastic guys. And their testimonies is one of us, an elder saint, and one of us, a younger man. And they were big football fans. Big, they would never miss a game. But when they gave their life to God, when they gave their life to Jesus Christ, it wasn't too long after that they said, you know what? I'm going to be in the house of God. They were the biggest number one football fan. But when it came to the Lord, and I was amazed. I saw one of these men. I was like, Wow, and I saw him give his heart to the Lord, and I'm like, you're here Sunday morning at 1030, and there he was. And I says, isn't there a game? He says, yeah, I know, but we got church. That was an awesome thing. That's a sign when you're getting hungry for God, because things at once that you were interested in, sports and, and, and activities and shopping and going out to the beach, and these are all good things, but, but God comes first. Things that you would run to for comfort, people or activities that you would run to for advice and comfort, they're kind of fading away. God's coming first. That's a sign of hunger. God, I want more of you. I'm, I'm just going to turn off those things that I used to listen to, turn off that music. I want more of your music, more of your word speaking to me, God. Speak to me. The Holy Spirit is drawing to you. And see, when you have that hunger, you need to take the next step. When you're hungry at home, you don't just sit on the couch and go, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. What do you do? You get up, you go to the kitchen, you go online, and what am I going to order? You know, DoorDash, what, what am I going to get? You're looking for something. You take some action. Here's this. I want you to read the scripture. This is powerful. John chapter 6, verse 44, it says this. Jesus said, for no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. Let me read that again. Jesus said, for no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. See, actually, God is drawing you to him. He's pursuing you. That hunger that he puts in you, and you let that stir up. That's why we have to stir it up, because all this stuff of the world, the pressure that comes in, it, it, it weighs it down. But when we start stirring it up, stirring it up, God starts to move that. Break that stuff off. Break it off. Stir it up. I'm that hunger, that passion, I want that back in there. God puts a hunger in you. And here's Jesus knocking on the door, and that knocking requires a response. Glory to God. Jesus knocks on the door. He says, behold, I'm standing at the door. I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice, I'm going to, hey, I'm, I'm right there for you. He's coming after you. And so when Jesus starts to stir up us, there's a hunger. And we start to get out of our comfort zone. Here's this Jeremiah 29, verse 13. It says, you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Look at that. You're going to seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Do you ever remember playing that game, hide and seek, when you were a kid? Maybe you never played it, but you might see some kids. Um, they hide, and then you're supposed to seek. You're supposed to, that's an action word. You're supposed to go looking for them, right? You look here, you look there. You're looking for them. You don't just sit there and wait for them to show up. So God says, you know, if you seek me, you search for me, you're going to find me. 
And when you're hungry, just like you're hungry in the natural, you go to the kitchen and say, you open up the fridge, what do I want to eat? Do I want some chicken? Eh? Do I want some eggs? Eh? And you open up the cupboards, am I hungry for this? I don't, you don't know. But, when you, but there's an action involved in it. Same thing when we're seeking God. God, I, what does your word have to say to me today? I, I want to be still. I want to hear your voice. Speak to me today, God. Because God is challenging us. See, this intimacy with God, it's a challenge to us. He's challenging us. Come out of our complacency. Stir it up. Stir up our hunger, our, our passion, and, and, and put aside the things of this world. Just being in his presence. There's joy. There's peace. There's life. There's goodness. Such great things that you want to just be in his presence. God, I'm hungry for you. There's a hunger he wants to put in your heart. So we need to shift our attitudes, shift our mindsets. God, I'm looking for you. I'm hungry for you. And when you hear the word of God, it starts to change things. I love this Psalm 119, verse 103. It says this, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Look at this. How sweet are your words to my taste. Look at that. When you're reading the word of God, the Bible, that's God's word. His word. He made it available to us. We don't have to try to figure God out. He tells us right there. His Holy Spirit confirms truth to us. God, how sweet when I taste. Again, that's an action word. I'm going to taste. I'm going to read what your word has to say. It's, man, it's just sweet. It's just so good. It's so refreshing. It's so amazing. It's so personal. Like this, it says, it's sweeter than honey to my mouth. It's indescribable how sweet, oh God, are your words to me. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God reveals himself through his word. And when we start reading the scriptures, reading some Psalms, reading something out of the New Testament, reading something out of the book of Acts, real people, real time, God is real, real people, broken people, difficult times, but yet God was relentless in pursuing them. He, he stirred up a hunger in them. He's calling after them. So as I close with this, I want to ask you today, is Jesus knocking at the door of your heart? Is he trying to get your attention? Is there a hunger stirring up in your heart? If there's not, you can ask God for it. God's, he's, he wants your attention. He's pursuing you. Because God has an appointment with you. And he has an appointment with you. He has an appointment with our community, with our city. He wants to meet with us. But we need to open the door and make way for him. He's standing at the door. You know, you've probably seen these pictures. I'm standing at the door and knocking. He doesn't force himself on it. He knocks. Holy Spirit, he's a polite, he's a gentleman. He doesn't force himself, doesn't demand. God doesn't demand we serve him. I'm standing at the door and knock. Here's an invitation. It's up to you. Are you going to receive the inv invitation? Or are you going to decline? It's up to you. But what an invitation. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I feel the Lord is speaking to some people here today. And even if you know him or if you don't know him, you might have been feeling far away. Say, God, I'm just hungry for you. I love you. Just pray with me. Holy Spirit, speak to me today. Father of God, forgive me for sinning against you, for sinning against others, and even sinning against myself. God, I want to hunger for you. God, I give you my life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to stay in this attitude of prayer. Jay's going to be coming and bringing a worship song. And as we sing this song, I just want you to let the presence of God minister to you. Be still. As I know it's different as you're watching online. I want you to sit right where you're at. Turn the music up. Just let the Spirit of God minister to you. And after, we get, after this song, then I'll be back to pray a blessing over you and over your household. Let's, let's worship the Lord together.
beyond the music, beyond the noise, and all that I need is to be with you, and in the quiet, hear your you're in this place please let me stay rest in your holiness word of God speak would you pour down like rain washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place Yes, amen, amen. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And God, we need you. Father, we thank you for your goodness. You're such a good God. Father, you load us with benefits. And Lord, I speak a word of blessing over every household here today. I speak life. I speak hope in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, I take authority over every lie of the adversary in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over every household. Because God, I thank you. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And God, because we know you, God, we have strength. We have courage. We have... We have just confidence in you. And Master, I pray that people today are going to be feeling your presence. They're going to know you in a great and powerful, precious way, O oh God. And Master, I pray, O oh God, that Father, in the days to come, that hunger is going to grow. God, they're going to meet you at home. God, they're going to meet you when we gather together, O oh God. And I thank you, O oh God, Father, for what you're doing today. I thank you. We just praise you. We thank you for your presence, God. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Praise God. I love God's presence. Glory to God. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Listen, thank you for being with us today. The kids will be coming online at 1130. But um, if this message ministered to you, click like, click share. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let someone know that Jesus cares for them. Stir up your hunger, stir up your heart. Stay connected. We have some announcements coming up for you. Listen, God bless you. We love you. See you again.